Hello and welcome to Friday Lines. I'm your host, Luke O'Brien, aka OB. Friday Lines is brought to you by Little Birdie TV and topsport.com.au, punting form and manscaped, all your essential items for life. Joining me today for all things AFL is MG. Welcome, MG. Thanks, OB. How are you this morning? Going well, thank you. And the doyen of rugby league, Top Rope. Hello, Top Rope up there in a warm orange. Yeah, top of six today, but uh, we're up and about. We've got a little jumper on and a uh, bit of golf this afternoon, so... Great to be here, OB. Great to be here. Beautiful. And uh, I'll pump you up a little bit here, MG, but uh, Geelong last night, 91, Melbourne, 63. You advised last week on uh, first look that uh, you always uh, don't bet against Geelong at Geelong, and it came through last night. Yeah, quick way to the poorhouse, isn't it, OB? Uh, you were down there last night to witness it, and, um, yeah, the, their record speaks for itself over a long long amount of time now. Um, they're very hard to beat down there, even – when it's the reigning premiers and the top of the table, Melbourne going down there, they just play the ground too well. And you saw it live last night. And you were commentating. They just uh, out Melbourne, Melbourne, really. They just suffocated it from the back end, didn't they? They were outstanding. Yeah, they um, set up really well behind the ball. Um, the first time I've seen, or second time I've seen Sam DeConning live, he is going to be an absolute star of the uh, of the competition. Jack Henry was back to some form. Dangerfield looks fresh and fit. Um, and then there was no real influence from. Uh, Hawkins, Cameron, or Stengel. So it was really pleasing for Geelong. I think a lot of upside for them. Yeah, I agree. They got Stewart to come back into the lineup, of course. So they were able to handle Melbourne's offense, who have gone right off the boil um, probably in the last five weeks overall, or six weeks overall. Um, just not sure where their goals are coming from against well set up defenses. Um, they've got no one in their forward line that really scares a team with a good defense like Geelong. And I think that's how they went in last night. Um, so, yeah, 28 points, uh, big win, uh, and the scoreboard really flattered them, didn't it? Uh, yeah. Kick 12-19, missed a lot of easy chances. So I thought the margin could have been north of 50, really, in terms of the, the context of the game. Um, but, yeah, a lot of upside for the Cats. And I think Melbourne, now going forward, they've got six really tough games, um, none that you could probably, you know, guarantee. They're all uh, either in the eight or fighting for the eight. So the next six weeks, Melbourne have got a uh, bit of a job on their hand to find some uh, – form in the forward half to make sure they finish A in the top two and even the four. Yeah, look, I think Gorn looked a little bit short of a run last night. Stanley's in some ripping form for Geelong. Uh, Stephen May was great down back. Um, but, yeah, in their, their midfield, Oliver and Petrarca were once again. And Viney, Viney's in some terrific nick. It's just, yeah, if they get that forward half cohesion, uh, I think they'll be, be around the mark, but they need to find that and find that quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a bit of Wimbledon news overnight. Uh, the great Nick Kyrgios, toot, toot, all aboard the Kyrgios train. I'm driving it. I've been driving it for a couple of weeks. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so a walk over, over Nadal, which is yeah, never like to see that. Uh, but, yeah, now, um, yeah, Djokovic and uh, Norrie in uh, tomorrow's uh, semi final. As we look at the market from topsport.com.au, Djokovic still the clear favourite, $1.26. Uh, Kyrgios at four dollars and Cameron Norrie at twenty six dollars to win the championship. Uh, top rope, you've been uh, you've been following this one, mate. Yeah, I am, and I had uh, a Taylor Fritz pre tournament at one hundred and one dollars to make the final. So to call me absolutely livid at Rafael Nadal would be an understatement. There is arguably no athlete this side of Sandy Williams who I now despise more <laughs> than Rafael Nadal. So uh, to call me. Uh, uh, Unspeakable this morning. Unspeakable with <laughs> that news. So, uh, yeah, I'm done with tennis. Tennis can get right on the set. Well, we'll get to the uh, we'll get to the Scottish Open in a moment. But uh, the Wimbledon's women mark women's market as well. Um, I'll let you um, pronounce these uh, these finalists here, uh, MG. River Keener at uh, two thirty two, and she's going to play number three seed Jabir at one sixty three. So. Um, going to be a good betting game. Uh, I'm not sure uh, many would have picked this at the start of the tournament and. Uh, too many people pick him in a lineup either, um, out of a lineup, I should say. Um, even though Jabir is the uh, number three seed, he's not uh, well known in, uh, I guess, in the wider world. But um, history made from both here. Uh, uh, OB um, Rebekina is the first singles player ever from Pakistan to uh, reach a reach a major final, and Jabir is the first Arab player to reach a uh, major final as well. So history uh, on both parts of the female. So someone will go on and. Uh, Become a first major championship winner from their uh, from their respective countries. Well, and there'll be history on both sides of the draw because uh, no one likes Djokovic and no one likes Kyrgios and uh, no one knows who Nori is. So uh, anyway, it should be good. <laughs> it should be a good final all round. And last night, uh, the Melbourne Storm top rope, but they are they in a bit of strife. Uh, what, lost uh, two in a row now under Bellamy. 
Um, yeah, and Cronulla, you know, 26 to, uh, 20, 28 to 6 over the storm last night. Um, yeah, any worries for the storm there? Lots of worries for the storm. Uh, yeah, there's been a few things that have gone on with the storm. Obviously, you know, missing the origin players has some impact, but it's the manner in which they've lost, and particularly the, the, the holes in the defence, which will cause absolutely no end of headaches for, for Craig Bell. I mean, you've got a lot of, you, you're seeing, I know they've been stretched out wide, but you're seeing a lot of dumb players playing for the Storm, which is typically not what you get. Often you kind of get the stars and you kind of get some, you know, it's pretty vanilla kind of, you know, average players who, who probably usually excel kind of by their smarts and doing what they need to do. Same players like Dean Oriama and, and Marion Seva and Chris Lewis play. The Storm are just absolutely no hope within the side. Like they, they not only provide nothing, but they're extraordinarily detrimental. So, um, He's got some concerns there because there's there's not a lot of whole there's not a whole lot of outside backs to come back. We'll see me shift out, which will probably see Iriama off um, out of the side. But uh, yeah, I, I'm not expecting yeah you know, things to turn around super quickly. He'd also be pretty upset with senior players like Brandon Smith, who yeah, like not only is he looking and playing unfit and with a relative degree of selfishness, uh, like he's. The storm on the attack, last chance to probably win the game, gives a gobful to the referee, gets Simba and then gives a gobful to someone in the crowd as well. So, yeah, a few concerns for the storm, no doubt. Yeah, it's not looking uh, not looking great for them. But if anyone can turn it around, it probably is Craig Bellamy. As we look to Origin Game 3, just an early look and uh, some initial thoughts. Uh, Queensland, 2.25. Uh, New South Wales, $1.65. Uh, the line, 2.5. And the over under, 38.5. Anything sort of take your fancy early on here, top rope? Oh, does it what? I cannot believe Queensland are not favourites in this game. I am absolutely stunned at the betting in this game that New South Wales are favourites. The, the, the line is completely wrong here, and some other good judges I've spoken with, I tend to agree. Most of us have priced up the, the, the Maroons kind of, you know, from anywhere from kind of two point favourites to, 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 to three and a half point favourites. Uh, in, in the last 14 live games, so non dead rubbers at Suncorp, Queensland have won 13 of them. They've won the last five deciders at Suncorp. Yeah, often with an inferior, you know, often with a superior team, but in 2020 with an inferior team. This is absolutely astonishing to be in this game. I, I will be. Uh, I think the New South Wales team they've picked is ordinary. I've got no idea why they didn't go back to Regan Campbell Yellow and they've gone with Jordan McLean and then Jacob Safidi. Yeah, they've left out Jack White and the best player from game one. I thought the courage Fitler showing game two to make some of the necessary changes went. Sadly, missing for for game three, very conservative team selection. I, I, I'll be living in Queensland on this one. Ooh, I heard it first here for uh, the listeners in the early market. Sounds like chips all in job yeah, next week. Absolutely, and uh, a bit of Scottish Open action overnight. Top rope, uh, Cameron Triangle leads after round one nine under. He's a leader by three to uh, Gary Woodland. Very windy conditions there over in uh, in Scotland. Uh, anything uh, anything on your betting ticket there? Uh, well, firstly, how good is Lynx Golf? It is just tremendous. How good is getting golf broadcasting to your home at five in the afternoon? Tremendous. Lots, <laughs> lots of positives there. Um, I will say this. If you want to lay any one, lay Cameron Tringali. He uh, currently holds the record for the most money won on the PGA Tour without ever recording a victory. So um, he might be leading by three, but I'll be laying them to your nosebleeds uh, from here on in. Um, look. The, the early guys obviously got the benefit of, of a pretty good draw today. I thought Cameron Smith played played pretty well. He's probably my best shot at the moment. Uh, Jordan Smith as well at, at two one. I think he, he's looking good at, at triple few odds. But um, what you typically see on these these courses is the draw plays a huge huge impact. So yeah, those, so those morning players are going to have some real struggles in the afternoon tomorrow. I expect the wind will get up again. So. Um, yeah, this is far from over, and I think even though we, you kind of see you know, your likes of Justin Thomas, at, yeah, three over, Matt Fitzpatrick at one over, I think yeah, yeah, they they they'll, they'll, they could certainly be be featuring on the weekend with a, a nice early start tomorrow or tonight. Well, we can uh, we can watch the golf early, and we can also watch the cricket early as well. Second test starts uh, over in Gore with uh, looks like Glenn Maxwell coming back in the side to mm. possibly bowl some off spin and bat at eight, so uh, just stiffens up the. Uh, Stiffens up the Australian batting lineup. 
But uh, that's enough of that. Time now for Friday Lines, brought to you by topsport.com.au, family owned and operated for 35 years. Bet with a bookie you can trust. Bet with topsport.com.au. And the first AFL game we'll look at is the Friday night fixture up at the SCG. The Sydney Swans, $1.57. The Western Bulldogs, $2.45. The line, minus 7.5, over under 163.5. Uh, Logan McDonald and Tom Hickey out uh, for the Swans. Uh, Tim English back in as well for the Bulldogs. So we might sway the market a little bit there, but uh, anything uh, anything take your fancy, MG? Yeah, this market's pretty solid from the uh, start here, OB. They opened eight and it's only moved to seven, probably just on the back of English being uh, guaranteed to start to play. It, they also get Edwards back, so... Probably a, 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 light, a slight plus to the Bulldogs in the team announcements. Uh, yeah, hard to line up this game. Both teams obviously sitting eighth and tenth at the moment, so this is uh, a mini final even though we're uh, seven weeks out. Um, Sydney have been very up and down. Their uh, win-loss now uh, I think extends up to about nine weeks now, and the Bulldogs, uh, even though they've won five out of the last seven, the opposition they've beaten on their wins have been pretty uh, the average side of the ladder, so... Yeah, you know, it's pretty hard to place. I think Sydney, by default, being at home, probably land, lands a favourite here. Um, I'm not sure the market will move too much. I'm more interested in the uh, in the total. I think this is a good spot for the overs. And again, the weather was average at the start of the week. I think when the bookies maybe were looking to do it and it's cleared, uh, and I don't think they've moved far enough. So they opened uh, as low as 157.5. It's up to 163.5 now. This will start. Greater than one sixty five and a half, I think OB. So um, you can keep back in the over here. I think uh, both over sides, um, and I think this will be probably, hopefully, it'll finish more one sixty five, one seventy in terms of a game result. But uh, yeah, I think uh, be a competitive game. Uh, massive consequences for the loser here as well. So um, especially if the Bulldogs, if they lose this, I think their season's uh, pretty much dusted for the finals for me. And watch for uh, watch for Buddy Franklin to come out firing. He has a pretty good record against the Bulldogs. So. Um He's yeah, a pretty good record against most sides. <laughs> he, <does. laughs> he does. He uh, does. So true. Uh, only three games of NRL action this weekend. So the first one tonight, 7.55 uh, up at Newcastle. It's the Newcastle Knights, 2.45. Uh, the Rabbitohs, $1.55. The line, 4.5. Over under, 41 and a half. Uh, your tip, South Sydney, last week, uh, top rope, is one of your best bets for the weekend. Uh, are you on them again here? Yeah, not one of the best bets for this weekend. The best bet for this weekend, OB, you'd be, be happy to hear. Uh, yeah, Big Latrell's back. Um, and, look, he was obviously short of a gallop last weekend, but I thought he was very impactful. And he's he's certainly the kind of the, the tie that lifts all boats and South certainly played a lot better with him at the back there. Um, I, I'm, I'm a bit surprised being is, is this close to me. South have won 11 of 13 against Newcastle, the last two by 14 plus. Uh, they go well as a favourite away from ANZ. Notably, that Newcastle covered just three of 11 as a home underdog, covered just two of their last 10 off scoring 30 plus, and covered just 12 of their last 37 off a win. So, uh, they're not, this is not a good spot for the Knights here. A uh, few questions around Alex Johnson as to whether he will play or not. Uh, kind of indicators I probably won't, but I'll, I'll, I'll be all in on uh, South Seattle. There's sort of Cody Walker. Still got Latrell Mitchell and the, they'll be the, the, the two best players in the field. So, uh, yeah, very keen on South Oh, I love it when you say that. Really, really warms <laughs> the cockles of my heart, uh, top rope. It's great to hear. As we look at the Saturday night game in the AFL, St Kilda $1.90 and the Dockers $1.90 as well. The line uh, zero even there and the over-under 157.5. Um, on paper, this looks a beauty. This, the Saints were back in form last week. Um they lose Howard and Clark uh, this week. Frio remain unchanged. Um, St Kilda gave them a touch-up over there. I think it was around three or four um, over at uh, Optus Stadium. Um, but at the Dome, so you'd probably lean towards the Saints. Uh, I'm not as convinced on this one. I, I think Howard's a huge loss with mm. um, with Tabernar and also um, uh, Rory Lobb down there. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd stay away from this one. But uh, what, are you, what are you liking here? Yeah, I don't think this is a betting game for me this week. I think there's better options that you uh, can place your uh, your action on. I agree with you. It's um yeah, I'm not I'm not convinced on St Kilda. They've lost three out of their last four, and their only win was against Carlton, which you know couldn't kick the side of a bus. Carlton, so <laughs> I, you know, I mean, I know they got the victory, but it was almost by default that uh, they won that game. So you know, if if this game was St Kilda had lost four in a row, um, 
And coming into Frio, won four out of the last five with Frio. Only lost four for the year. I know it's over in the dome, but the Frio should be a strong favourite. Uh, if that was the case, I would have thought. So just that checks a bit. Yeah, Poor. It's, I think the bookies are, are probably just put it up pick as well. Um, Frio was slight favourites at the start with St Kilda's now coming to, or they've come into pick. But, yeah, I, I couldn't have a pick. And they played a very ordinary standard game in round two. It was 65 to 55 OB, one of your specials where they – they don't like the scoring going on, so I can think uh, even at the Dome, I think it'll be uh, much the same. I think it'll be just a dour game. Um, and, uh, you know, it's again, St Kilda have to win because they're sitting on the, the crevice of the uh, the final eight there and Freo obviously pushing for top four. So there's a lot on the line, but, yeah, not a game I'd be lined up to go and watch. Absolutely. As we look at the Saturday night game at Leichhardt Oval, some traditional rivals, uh, the West Tigers against the Parramatta Reels. West Tigers four twenty, Parramatta Reels a dollar twenty four. The line twelve point five over under forty and a half. There, Parramatta coming off a disappointing loss last week to the uh, to the Bunnies. Uh, top rope. Uh, anything? Uh, anything? Take your fancy in this one? Yeah, not a game I want to be too heavily involved in. Uh, there's been a stack of money for the Eels here, which is a little surprising considering they've covered. Just four of their last 13 is a favourite. One of their last six went favoured by more than a converted try. Well, it's not a bad spot for the Tigers. They've covered eight of 10, getting 10 or more, 13 or five against the Spurs, scoring 10 or fewer. Look, the, the numbers suggest the Tigers are probably a betty, but they've, they've regressed under Brett Kamali. Uh, there's obviously some dramas there. Luke Brooks is unhappy. Don't know why the cops support him for 10 years when he's been rubbish, but anyway, he's unhappy. <laughs> Uh, Adam Dewey's apparently put the the the, the, the vinegar on Brett Kamal and said, pick me at 5'8 or pick me in reserve grade. I don't want to play centre. So a uh, few dramas going on uh, at the Tigers. So, look, lean towards the plus thing is a touch big, but if the Eels come out and won 40, it wouldn't surprise either. So, um, yeah, but, but have, we'll be having something small in the plus. Sounds like, it's, uh, sounds like it's a happy place over there at West Tigers. It's, um, yeah, <laughs> sounds like everyone's really happy. Going well. As we look at the absolute blockbuster on Sunday, uh, Hawthorne v Adelaide at Marvel. Um, it's uh, the Hawks dollar fifty seven, the Crows two forty five, the line minus nine and a half over under one seventy two point five. Uh, the Hawks lose a couple of a uh, couple of good players here. Um, Warpool uh, injured, day suspended, and our commiserations to Jack Gunston on the uh, on the loss of his father Ray, who was just a tremendous person. Uh, Ray Gunston, so our commiserations to the Gunston family. Uh, the Crows, uh, I think they're going a bit better than what people think. Um, you know, if they were in Melbourne, they'd probably get a few more, um, few more licks. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about the Hawks being this short. Uh, MG. Yeah, agree with you, Ob. It's a bit of a weird week. We're on the same page here, um, <laughs> and good to see you're going against your Hawks again. Uh, you dropped off them real quick, which is good to see. Um, yeah, I mean, geez, the form line doing the form here is a bit of a. Bit of a troll to get through. Uh, Hawthorne have lost uh, five straight. Adelaide have lost seven over the last nine. So they're, they're bottom teams at 15 and 14 on the ladder. Um, I think the value is is with Adelaide. The market uh, started 10s, only just moved one point to Adelaide on, on nine, probably just the amount of changes. Hawthorne made uh, Adelaide going with up to eight changes, Adelaide five. So probably uh, this stage of the year already, the teams are probably, as well as injuries, trying to blood some, blood some players for the future as well. So... Um, I don't think there'll be too much pressure in this game. Um, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I do shade Adelaide at the line. I think the value is there, and probably Adelaide one to thirty nine, even one to twenty four is probably around the margins you'd be looking in this game. Um, I like the over in this one, Ob. I think uh, um, one seventy, one seventy one, one seventy two. It hasn't really moved, so good chance on a Sunday to uh, to line up the uh, the dollars on the over here. Um, what have we got? Hawthorne at eleven and four overs, and uh, Adelaide at nine and six. So they've both been very dominant oversides this year, and I just think I just don't think the pressure will be in the game. And as long as they kick straight, then they'll uh, they'll put a handy number up. So covering covering over one seventy one, one seventy two here. Beautiful and big boy McAvoy back for the Hawks as well, which is great to see. Uh, the final game for the NRL uh, this weekend is the Brisbane Broncos at dollar seventy seven. The St George Illawarra Dragons two oh eight the line minus one point five over under forty and a half fifth versus eighth uh, last game at uh, Suncorp Stadium on Sunday. Um, which way you uh, which way you're leaning here, top rope? Yeah, most difficult game of the week to to get a grip on. The Broncos are missing a heap of players, uh, including Payne Haas, Patrick Carrigan, Kurt Capel. Uh, their pack has been you know, essentially decimated. They're essentially playing reserve grade pack at the moment, but. To argue with the Dragons have taken a big hit, even though they're missing just the one player. Ben Hunt, the linchpin, is out of origin. So 
it makes this a fairly difficult game to assess. Kind of go the home team here. They've covered 13 and 15 at Suncorp, 7 and 9 at Suncorp as a favourite. So, uh, look, leaning towards the Broncos, but absolutely zero confidence this one. It's too impacted by it. It's probably the, uh, the, the game most affected by it. And uh, Reynolds looked a little bit short of a run last week, so hopefully he'll be better for the run this week as well. Yeah, he did look short of a gut last week. Uh, you kind of get that with Reynolds a little bit. Like when he's on, he's he, he's absolutely fine. He, I wouldn't call him an inconsistent player, but when things aren't going well, he kind of doesn't have the running game or or, or kind of variation in his game to kind of really kind of spark something different. So, uh, lots of these things happen. Uh, I, I don't think it's any long term thing that he plays more games than bad. So, um, i will be fairly fairly confident Aaron Reynolds will, will, will bounce out this week. As we whip through the final games of the AFL Round 17 action, uh, Collingwood $1.05, North Melbourne $11, uh, the line 51.5 over under 164.5. That's the 145 game tomorrow at the MCG. Uh, anything doing there, MG? You'll be looking forward to this. I hear you going out there live. Maybe yeah, it should be a beauty. Off. I've got uh, one verse two and then this one. So, yeah, going well. Um yeah, good money here for the Kangaroos, 57 and a half down to 51. So that surprises me since the uh, Kangaroos have uh, lost 13 straight and uh, lost their last 11 by 47 or more. So I um, don't know how many punters have got some uh, cash left over to keep back in North Melbourne. But, uh, yeah, I think this is just a game what what mood Collingwood rock up in. And, uh, yeah, if they kick straight, they'll put any kind of number on it once. So, yeah, not a betting game for me. And to go in a little bit of doubt there with the yep. quad as well, as we look to the Saturday afternoon game up there on the Gold Coast, uh, Gold Coast $1.90, Richmond $1.90 as well, the line even uh, over under 167.5. Gold Coast are going well. They just can't get over the line in the tight ones. Uh, Stewie Jew re-signed during the week. Uh, the Tigers, a couple of big outs. Uh, Lambert and Martin in particular, and Boston uh, in the back half suspended for a week. So this could be an interesting one up there. Yeah, really good. I like this game. Um, I think uh, Gold Coast, as you said, they've lost uh, two close ones by two points and five points to a good side. So they're definitely competitive. Uh, Richmond have won five of their last seven. Um, sorry, seven of the last nine as well. So, yeah, pick them game. Uh, good money for Gold Coast. Richmond started a couple of points favourite in this. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm going to stay out of this one and watch. But, uh, yeah, don't really have a lean in this game. I think there could be points in a dry game, mid-afternoon game. Might just shade the over. And uh, Port Adelaide GWS at uh, Adelaide Oval on Saturday night. The power at dollar 38, GWS 310. The line minus 15.5, over under 163.5. Uh, the power just have to keep winning. Simple as that. Yeah, all or nothing for Port. Uh, giant season's over. Port at home. Um yeah, the market really has moved a bit to GWS, both off six-day breaks as well, uh, a night game. I don't see too many points in this game. I think it'll be hotly contested as well. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not convinced. I think the the value probably will – the money will probably keep coming for GWS in this. I don't see any value on the port side. I know they have to win and they are at home, but, uh, yeah, I think there'll be uh, – points will be a premium, and I think this might be a closer game rather than uh, one-sided. Uh, as we go to a very interesting betting game, the next one, Brisbane Lions thirty, the Bombers three sixty. the line now minus 23.5, over under 180.5. Um, seven changes for the Lions, uh, illness and injury sort yeah. of um, decimating them. And, uh, yeah, a lot of money for the Bombers on the line here. Yeah, they moved 10 points. So the market opened 33.5 down to 23.5 here. As you said, a lot of changes, and they've lost some uh, – They've lost some decent players too with um, Zorko, Rich, uh, McStay, Coleman. So there's plenty out for Brisbane as well. Essendon, hard to catch. I couldn't back him going up there. Again, Brisbane, dominant home ground advantage. Uh, on a Sunday, fast deck should suit. Uh, I'm going to stay out of the line. Uh, at least it keeps tumbling. If it got down to about 20 or something, I could maybe entertain Brisbane. But the play on the over here is uh, you know, unbelievable. I was rated at north of 180, and I was hoping the bookies might put up about – Mid 170s, which they did, so 175 is definitely a bet. It's creeping up now to uh, almost to 180. I think it'll start north of 180. There'll be too many points in this game on a dry, dry ground up there. Uh, the way Essendon defend as well, yeah. the Brisbane front six, uh, only only bad kicking will stop this total getting closer to 200. And the final game for round 17, uh, West Coast 3.30, Carlton $1.35, the line 18.5, over under 161.5. That's the 440 game over in Perth at Optus Stadium. This really intrigues me, this game. I've got some worries for Carlton here. Uh, Travelling over there, Josh Kennedy comes back in. West Coast look like they're getting back to some reasonable form. Natanui second up. 
Um, yeah, I, I don't mind the Eagles here. Yeah, agree with you again, OB. This is a Jeez. rare week What's for happening? us. happening? We're going to circle round 17 down. Um, yeah, as you said, the in's in for West Coast. Uh, Kennedy's obviously a big key. West Coast won the last seven head-to-head against Carlton, so it's an important stat there for mine. Uh, yeah, I, I think the plus plus here is a very good bet, good spot for them at home. Bit of weather around, um, which will also keep it to more West Coast's spot. But, yeah, I think the plus here, and if the weather stays away, then uh, there'll be a good push for the over late. But, yeah, West Coast for me. Beautiful. And uh, just a reminder, you can get the AFL Stings for $22 a week in the Little Birdie.live shop for your AFL betting action. MG, thank you for uh, joining us for AFL Round 17 Action. Great weekend of sport coming up. Uh, enjoy yeah, awesome. that. Thank and uh, Top Rope, the greatest game of all, the GGOA, also available for $22 a week in the Little Birdie.live shop for all your NRL betting action. State of Origin, 8-10 on Wednesday night. Looks a beauty. Uh, stay warm up there in Orange. Hit them well. And, uh, yeah, hopefully there's a bit of money in your pocket come Monday morning. Well, let's hope so. After the storm tobacco last night, we're going to have to find some winners to make sure that happens. You've got the Scottish Open. You've got Kyrgios. You've got all you need. Uh, you've got the Test Cricket at Gaul starting at 2.30, so there's beautiful action all around. But uh, that's a wrap for this week's Friday Lions. Thank you to MG and Top Rope. You can follow us on YouTube. Find us in the Apple Store, on Spotify, on SoundCloud, wherever you listen to all good podcasts. Follow Little Birdie, uh, follow at Little Birdie TV on Twitter and Instagram. Remember, all your footy betting action can be found at topsport.com.au. Uh, we'll be back next Friday for Friday Lines. And don't forget to join Nikki on Monday for first look with all the weekend's action review. Punt well, punt responsibly, and have a great weekend, punters. Mm-hmm.